Nowadays, there are so many time trial helmets out there. How do you know which one is the fastest for you and your position on the bike? These helmets come in all shapes and sizes, with one looking even more futuristic than the other. And while eyeballing it can probably get you so far, you will not know which one is the best for you until you test them. And that's exactly what we tried to do. In the past weekend, we collected a bunch of helmets and took them out into the desert to the Alcudra cycling track. The Alcudra cycling track here in Dubai is a nearly 100 km long loop dedicated to cycling. It's free from other traffic and it actually never crosses any other roads. The more secluded parts of the track were perfect for what we had in mind. We used some cones and marked off a 1.5 km stretch of track. We then made sure that this stretch was free of any stones or other debris so that when we did our testing we could ride it in full aero position, tucked down and not have to worry about anything. The goal of our test day was to determine the coefficient of drag, or CDA, for each of the different aero helmets that we brought with us. Our selection of the day consisted of the following helmets. We had the Met Drone Generation 1, the Met Drone Generation 2, the Casque Mistral, the Giro Arrowhead 2, the Sweet Protection Redeemer, and finally the Poc Tempor. In these tests, I used my Factor Hanzo time trial bike with a Princeton rear disc and a Zip 404 front wheel. Martin is on his Canyon Speedmax CFR with a Zip rear disc and an AOX 100 mm front wheel. Both bikes run a mix of Continental GP5000, STR and TTR tires. To make the testing as scientific as possible, we fitted out both our bikes with an aero sensor pod. The aero sensor takes your speed and power data and combines this with its own measurements of the altitude and the wind to calculate your CDA. The idea here is that it will correct for all environmental factors and any difference in power input and then give you back an as clean as possible CDA for your test run. This way you can compare the CDA of one test with that of another and then hopefully make insightful conclusions. Installation of the aero sensor pod is pretty straightforward as it can simply be attached to an action camera mount. This way it will be centrally positioned in front of your bike's cockpit. AeroSensor has its own Garmin app which allows it to seamlessly integrate with your Garmin head unit. Once you enter details such as the weight of the rider and bike, the distance that your wheel travels in a single rotation and the speed at which you want the device to start recording data, you're all set to go. Now about the protocol that we followed. For our tests we use the out and back protocol. One and a half kilometer out followed by a U-turn and then one and a half kilometers back. We did that three times for each helmet. We started off the day by collecting our baseline data. We did that with the helmets that we normally use in our time trial events. For me, that was my trusted Met Drone Generation 1. I feel super comfortable in this helmet, as it allows me to tuck in nicely while still providing me with a good view. I then moved on to the Met Drone Generation 2. This one has a slightly different tail design, which connects better with my back. The rest of the helmet's design is pretty similar to the Generation 1 version, and it immediately felt very familiar. Third up was the Cusk Mistral. This one felt very fast, and I was amazed that it gave me an even better field of view than the Met Drones did. It was very spacious and seemed to provide a lot of cooling at the same time. On my fourth run, I tried on the Giro Arrowhead 2. This one takes quite a bit of getting used to, and this is the one I actually spend a lot of time on the rollers with. I felt that I had to get the feeling right, otherwise I might end up doing the test runs with the helmet sticking out in an awkward and possibly not so aerodynamic way. Even in hindsight, I'm not so sure that I wore this one in the best way possible. After repeating the baseline test with the Met Drone Generation 1, just to repeat the numbers, we moved on to the Sweet Protection Redeemer. I really like the look of this helmet, and despite it looking very compact, it actually provides a lot of space inside. Unfortunately, the wind started picking up by the time that we were testing the Redeemer, and in some of the runs, I could feel that I was actually starting to lean sideways into the wind. I was afraid that this would start to affect the quality of our test data. 
By the time I took the pocket damper out for a spin, the wind speed was getting too high and I didn't finish these runs because the quality of the data would be too poor. So what was the outcome of the day? Well, there was no clear winner, as three helmets showed similar results. The Met Drone Generations 1 and 2 and the Giro Airhead 2 seemed to perform best with my position on the bike. The difference between them was very small and, with our still limited experience with testing, I cannot say that one of them is actually better than the others. As expected, the data quality with the Redeemer and the POC was not super good, so I will probably want to go back and test those again. If you're like us and love the science behind riding a faster time trial, then doing some testing with a device like the AeroSensor is a lot of fun. Getting proper use of the device definitely has a learning curve, but as your experience builds, it will become easier. And when you're looking for those marginal gains, then it's really exciting to get hard data to base equipment selection on, rather than just going for what looks good. We hope this video helped a bit and provided some insights in aero testing.